So I'm going to be discussing Honda's 100 hands in Street Fighter V, how they work, why they work, where they work, how you can overcome them, all that sort of stuff. This is something that many people have requested that I do over the past year, and I'm finally getting to it, so shoutouts to that. And I'm going to go through this in kind of a structured way. So at first we're going to talk about some introductory, uh, introductory stuff. The different strengths of the hands, sort of how you cancel into them, why you should be using them in certain situations. Then we're going to be talking about frame traps. Then we're going to be talking about spacing traps, more importantly. Then we're going to be talking about how to take advantage of people who are frozen by them with throws and chip damage and that sort of thing. And then we'll talk a little bit about how players, opponents can overcome some of that stuff. How do you beat some of what Honda's trying to do here? And then, of course, hey, how does Honda beat that? Let's start by talking about the different strengths of hands. So there are three. Well, there are four, I guess, if you want to be technical about it. Uh, let's talk about light. Light hands has three hits, and it's plus two on block, and it's plus three on hit. Um, three, three hits, okay? One, two, three. Medium has five hits. It is plus one on block, and it's plus three on hit. One, two, three, four, five, right? And notice too that whereas Jab, he walks forward a little bit, right? You see his kind of movement forward. Strong waits a little bit before that comes out. Medium punch waits a little bit before he lunges forward. And again, that's only plus one. Fierce hands is seven hits. It's minus two on block. And it's only plus two on hit, so it's actually less plus on hit than the other two are. And it, it too, waits a while to lunge forward. Um, for them to come out in this situation here. So keep that in mind. I know that that's not super easy. A lot of the players who I play with and against have told me that keeping track of which hands is which is something that they find difficult to do. I know I know that's right, right? There's just gonna be a lot of buttons happening and you can get lost in that, but three, hand, three hits is light, five hits is medium, seven hits is fierce. You know it's EX if he goes all yellow all of a sudden. That one is very clear, right? And that's actually minus two as well. So some people who I've played against assume that if I'm spending bar on something, it's going to be plus on block. It's not like that. It is minus two. Uh, as far as the as far as the startup of these things go, this obviously jab is the is the fastest. It's a seven frame startup move. So when we're talking about doing jab hands into jab hands, that's a five frame gap, right? Plus two into seven frames. It's a lot longer for the rest of them. Medium is actually 17 frame startup. Okay, so if you want to do medium into medium hands, that is plus one into 17 frames. Huge gap. Fierce hands is 19 frame startup. We're talking about long stuff here. Uh, these are not fast options. And EX is 16 frames. 16 frames. So only jab is quick. The others are all pretty long. And that's going to become super important when we talk about frame traps and spacing traps and how to deal with that sort of stuff. Let's talk briefly about the V-Skills. I'll start out with V-Skill 1. V-Skill 1 is this, and it's cancelable. And it's cancelable into any special move, including into hands. As you can see, I mean it's cancelable into whatever you want, but including into hands. And that's only important in the sense that it's his farthest cancelable option that he always has. If you have V-Skill 2 active, you have farther ranging stuff, but if you don't have V-Skill 2, if you have V-Skill 1, or if you don't have V-Skill 2 active, this is actually his farthest cancelable option. And so this is something that Honda players will want to do if they have V-Skill 1. They'll want to get into range for it and cancel in that way. V-Skill 1's not fast either, it's 15 frame startup. So keep in mind, a lot of these things are pretty slow. V-Skill 2, as you see, I have it activated here. This makes it so that any button can be canceled into hands. And I mean any button, including ones that aren't normally cancelable. So this button, right, is not something you can normally cancel. But if you do have V-Skill 2, then you can cancel out of it. Same thing with everything. Sweep, whatever you want, right, in conclusion. That, whatever. And that makes it as well that if you land a hit with hands, you can combo out of every strength. Typically, you can only combo out of EX hands, and only into standing short. So your combos with this character typically are going to end something like that, EX hands into stand short, because that's all you can get. But if you do have V-Skill 2 active, 
you can instead get medium kick if you if you land it so you have a lot more damage potential with v skill 2 you you can cancel from this is his farthest tool right into hands you can create frame traps with that and there's a lot of utility to it but of course you know maybe a matchup thing some people like v skill 1 same on block v skill 2 is the same v skill 2 hands are the same on block as they always are they deal slightly more chip very small amount of additional chip and then the last thing to note about v skill 2 hands they actually build v meter by themselves right see my little v meter over there right so they actually build v meter in this way and that happens whether you're on whiff or whether you're hitting hitting will build more like you can see right here you see how much this builds like it's pretty it's a pretty substantial amount what's going on down there right but even on whiff you build some so keep that in mind as well why do you do hands what are the reasons to do these things one is chip damage. It's pretty obvious, right? Oh, let's make sure that I have her life on not auto recover. Yeah. So one reason to do hands is for chip damage and the chip damage can mount pretty quickly with hands. You know, I mean, this is, that's a lot, like very quickly. And that's, uh, it adds up. You know, I regularly get rounds where I'm dealing 20, 30% life in just chip. That doesn't happen all the time, that means that I've successfully gotten the mix-ups correct when it comes to hands, but yeah, you can definitely play for that. You create plus frame mix-ups for yourself. So again, jab hands is plus two, medium is plus one, and so this is a way to create more pressure for yourself. So it's a, it's a, it's a way to make things happen offensively. Uh, corner carry is another nice little reason for this. So look at that on block, that was on block, I mean I'm... You know, if you put yourself in the corner, this is this is maybe a fifth of the stage, maybe it's a quarter of the stage, even just on block even. Let alone if I were to get the hit into the combo, into whatever. I mean, you know, we're pretty regularly talking about substantial pushback uh, when it comes to hands on hit or arm block. Uh, another reason, obviously, is if you find the hit, right? You've landed a hit. You have just seen that something connected. Oh, okay, EX hands, right? That kind of thing. You you can immediately go into a combo, and that's a great reason to use them. Uh, once you have landed a combo, now you can start snowballing with hands. That's a nice thing as well. Um, it also provokes opponents. I mean, these are frustrations. These are points of frustration that many people don't want to handle. If I'm getting a lot of hands mix-ups, if I'm if I'm mashing on this stuff, as you can see, the chip is definitely mounting very quickly, and people don't like that. And so this is a very common spot in which people do V-reversal. Now, maybe that's good that they do V-reversal because they escape this pressure, but on the other hand, it means that they will not have access to V-trigger for at least a little while. And there are some characters, some matchups, whose V-triggers are super important and are really loath to give up V-meter. But with Honda harassing in this kind of way, Especially, you know, with this guy involved, I mean, there's a lot of things that provoke people to give up V-meter. Now, you can guarantee yourself a V-reversal against hands. Lots of things in this game aren't guaranteed V-reversals, but if you see hands, you can definitely do V-reversal and you'll knock Honda away, for sure. Again, maybe that's good for you, maybe that's bad, it just really depends on the situation. But if you're Honda and you want to make the opponent come off V-bar, this is one way to help provoke them into doing that. Another reason to use hands is to kind of bypass footsies. So footsies are ten, tend to be played at, you know, this range-ish, right? Something like this, we're talking about maybe a quarter screen. Uh, Honda, from pr further than that, is already a threat to, to harass. And so for many characters who depend on footsies at about this range, he can, you know, play this range of his own, which is not super great it's okay and then instantly be like way beyond that threshold and that that is a that is an attack range that not many characters have safely another reason is just to build bar that's nice again you're building v meter bar if you have v skill 2 active um, and in general i want to say that hands are typically better than headbutt for most of these little situations so you will often see honda players at about here about the same range right harass with Light butt slamming, a little bit further than that, yeah. I'm sorry, light uh, light head butt, right, about this range. Um, it's about the maximum range of Fierce Hands as well. And you'll see that quite often, but what that means is that when you do head butt, you're minus four. 
And although most characters can't punish at max range, this character can almost always punish. But most characters cannot. So you're safe-ish, right? But you do then have to play either a spacing game mix-up that it's often not in your favor, or you have to give up your turn. And you don't have to do that with hands. Um, in addition, the, this is really susceptible to getting jumped on. Whereas this, those little hands right there, those are actually like hitting where it shows that it's hitting. Like when his hand is up here, it actually is hitting up there. So some characters have difficulty hitting right below them. And while they can jump over a headbutt, they may not be able to do that against hands. So hands can actually have an anti-air hitbox. In some cases that results in a trade. In some cases you can combo that trade into EX Bot Slam or another headbutt or whatever it is. Uh, there's other stuff to do there. The nice thing about headbutt though, of course, is that you can just do whenever. Whenever, right? As long as you have back charge is the only requirement on this. Back charge. Headbutt can go over low buttons, definitely, definitely. So that that is that is a nice thing about it. However, at the same time, the speed, say that we're playing this game here and I do this and I go over your low button. If instead that had just been, I mean, I'm a little bit too far away about here. If that this had just been that, I would have been there first and gotten your button. Right, so there's that timing there. It's true that headbutt can go over low buttons, but um, I still think that in most situations, hands are preferable if you can find a buffer. Let's talk about another big issue with hands here, and that is that you can't just do it right away. You have to buffer from something. Every, well, most special moves in this game are, are just commands. Quarter, circle, forward, whatever, right? Back, charge, forward, whatever. This is not the same way for 100 hands. 100 hands needs to be buffered into something, and that means that it has this downside of not being instantly accessible to you. So you need to you need to have options that you're buffering from. So how to buffer into hands? A bunch of different ways. The fastest is actually whiffing stand short. This thing is really, really fast. Uh, I wrote down how many frames it is total because it's really quick. It is uh, 15 frames total, fast. Um, and doesn't really put you at risk, right? It's not like attacking forward in a way that's really whiff punishable. So you can use that little time right there, those 15 frames, to buffer in hands. Um, and obviously don't do that every time, right? You don't wanna make it clear. But occasionally using stand short as a way to get through into hands as a buffer, pretty important. Down forward roundhouse is another important one. So you can care cancel down forward roundhouse, meaning you can cancel it before it hits into any special move you know, you can do that into Butt Slam, for example. And if you're a genius, you can do it into Headbutt. Oh, that's super hard. Instead, more practical typically to do into Hands. You can cancel this from pretty early. You can cancel Down 4 Roundhouse from frame number 12. So this is his fastest way to instantly buffer into something, right? This is a 15 frame button, which means that you can't get Hands until the 16th frame. Whereas this, you can get it on the 12th frame. So if you're in neutral, you know, and you want to turn into hands real fast, this is a way to do it. Another way to buffer into it is with a jump attack that doesn't connect. For example, let's say that you whiff the neutral jump fierce. You can be hiding hands behind that. Right? Uh, that's pretty common. Also by dashing. You can hide this in a dash. Oh. Right? And that's same with dashing backwards. So, you know, when many characters dash backwards, they can't instantly get right back into your face. That's, Honda can do that uh, with hands by hiding that into the dash itself. Uh, you can hide it in a block. So say that you've just blocked, Sakura did a fireball. You just blocked, now you're mashing hands. When you come out of block stun, you're gonna get hands immediately. So another situation in which you can buffer hands. The best one though is with just canceling into it, right? So canceling a cancelable option into hands. Fierce, medium kick, uh, stand jab, crouching jab, stand short, crouching short. Those are the ones that are always cancelable. You can, with V skill 2, make it so that anything's cancelable. Uh, but those are, those are the ones that are that are always cancelable, uh, as is standing strong down forward roundhouse, right? So 
stand medium kick, down forward roundhouse is a target chain, and just like regular down forward roundhouse, you can cancel that before it hits. And if you're the best, you can cancel stand strong into down forward roundhouse, into jab hands, so fast that it will combo in this way without needing a counter hit or anything. So those are your cancelable tools. I do want to say as well that stand medium, stand light punch is better than crouching light punch for a couple of different reasons. Um, one is that it has more range. And maybe more importantly, if you have an opponent who is blocking and then doing a very fast four frame button. Let's have Sakura do this here. Whoop. Right. So if you do crouching jab into medium hands, uh oh. Nobody knows about this, but this exists. Four frame buttons can trade with that, three frame can beat it. But if you do stand jab into medium hands, you actually will beat four frame buttons. So there's slightly more block stun in it. There's literally one frame more of block stun in it. And that's good enough to beat four frames in that situation and to trade with three frames. So it's just a better tool. Use that if you can. The downside is something I already showed, which is that you can accidentally get into the corner, into the uh, target chain of jab strong. Bum -bum. You don't want this. And to avoid that, there's just no, no way to do it other than do hands quickly. That's all there is, right? Not easy, but that is what you gotta do. So these are ways to get hands started. All right, so you kind of know why to do hands, which strengths do what, how you get into hands in the first place. And again, I just want to reiterate that if a Honda player is at neutral in this way, he can't just do hands. You can't just immediately start it, okay? He needs to hide it in some kind of button, some kind of a movement option, a normal, a special, whatever it is like that. So if you're here, you're not as worried about hands. Once hands begin though, the last thing that you can hide hands behind is hands. Because once you're here, you can just keep mashing, right? Mash, 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 right? And that's, uh, that's a big way that you kind of keep the snowball of hands going is by using hands as a buffer for the next hands. As far as frame traps go, before we talk about frame traps into sort of from hands, let's talk about frame traps from but normals into hands. There it is. Uh, so that'll that'll beat three and four frame buttons, uh, and that's useful, right? You got a little frame trap right there. That's not like super great, but that's something that you can do. Uh, and if you have V Skill Two activated, you can use Ford Roundhouse into Fierce Hands as a frame trap. Uh, you can use sweep into medium hands as a frame trap. So there's a couple of other things that you can do that uh, you don't normally have access to in frame traps. And you know to reiterate that this is an important way to get into hands, uh, if you let the strong down four roundhouse just come out, you will counter hit somebody who tries to, to poke there. That will beat three frame buttons. And if you're a genius, if you do the fastest jab hands that you can, you will beat three frame buttons as well. Let's see if I can do it. Hey, I did. Wow, first try. Can't believe it. Um, <laughs> I tried that for a while last night. So that will beat three frame buttons as well. So there are some frame traps into hands. As far as frame traps from hands goes, there's not a lot. <laughs> True frame traps, there's actually not a lot. So if you do jab hands into stand jab against a four frame button character, you'll beat their frame trap. I'm sorry, you'll beat their four frame button with your frame trap. That's it. That's it for frame traps, uh, at least with normal stuff. So if you have, if you have this going, or if you have V-Trigger 2, either way, you can have an additional layer to this frame trap, but that's it. So this is not this is not a great set of true frame trap options in the sense of frame advantage. You know how much frame advantage do you have? How fast are your buttons? That kind of stuff. Uh, if you do this and then stand short, oh, I have her on four frames. So she actually walks into it. But stand short will typically whiff in that situation. Right. So although this is your four frame button, it's too dinky to actually connect. Uh, so that's not. 
gonna cut it. Well, if it's not frame traps, what's the mix up here? The mix up and the main point of hands is spacing traps. That's the real set of mix ups here. It, you're essentially maintaining pressure by using options that will whiff punish the opponent for trying to do something. And you make that happen in a couple of different ways. One is by making sure that you're starting your pressure at like exactly the right spot. Another is by using follow-ups that don't move Honda's hurt box forward, or in fact that retract Honda's hurt box. Let me show you what I mean here. So if we set her to do her three frame crouching jab, if we do point blank stand fierce into this, into LP hands, we'll see what happens. She hits me. Let's say I am the tiniest bit backwards. Okay. Oh, what? This is supposed to work. It worked yesterday. There it is. All right. So if you're just a little bit farther backwards, then what you're not, what you're doing here is not getting to her before she gets to you. Again, that's a seven frame option. You're only plus two. So there's a five frame gap there and she gets there first with her crouching jab because that's a, free, a three frame option. Instead, what you're effectively doing is whiff punishing. There it is. Now you can do this with other stuff as well. So this into stand strong is a common option in this situation. His hurt box doesn't move forward immediately with standing strong. Uh, another common option here is this into that. This is really important. If you were here, the reason that that works is, again, this idea of the spacing trap. When Honda does stand fierce, his hurt box does not move forward. On frame eight, he brings his hand into actual hitting uh, active frames. And when he does that, even still, there's no hurt box that extends on the ground until even later than that. So you have a good, I believe it's frame nine. Yeah, at frame nine, finally, there's a hurt box that that's at like character height. So that's a lot of frames there in which you get to start up an option that doesn't have something that the opponent can immediately hit it, right? So because of this, you get to set up this very common situation of being in a spot where you are only plus two, but where your slower button actually whiff punishes something and or just avoids its hurt box entire its hit box entirely because you are not moving your hurt box forward at all. Let's say that we're at like a far range and we want to rush in and do this. So if I were to press an immediate num other button there, she would probably hit me. So I need something that either doesn't move my hurt, my hurt box forward immediately, or I need something that actually retracts it. So jump back, fierce hands. Yeah, she hits me. What do I got? That is a whiff punish right there. And again, this is fierce was minus two, and then fierce hands was minus two, and then medium punch hands was 17 frame startup. 19 frame gap, gigantic. Why does this work? It's because Honda doesn't move his hurt box forward until pretty deep into the medium and fierce hands, right? So you can do weird abusive stuff like this that maintains pressure, even though the opponent's using a pretty far and fast option to try to shut you down. And if you have a similar kind of uh, option, let's do this, right? Again, that doesn't move his hurt box forward. Here's another option. Yeah, like that. So down forward roundhouse, actually at frame four begins retracting his hurt box. So if you can call out that the opponent is planning to do some slower button with farther reach, which is how you typically defend against spacing traps in this way, you can actually retract yourself and get to a range at which you can then cancel into hands, or if you want to, you can cancel here. So, th so, so these are the ways to continue your pressure. It is with spacing traps, which are effectively whiff punishes, which are effectively making it so that using your weird normals that don't extend your hurt boxes or that actually retract your hurt boxes, you get to kind of maintain this fight at a, at a range that many characters have trouble dealing with. Now, this is something that takes a lot of practice. And I feel like a big part of why this kind of pressure wasn't really used in the first half year-ish of Honda having come out was that it took a better understanding of spacing 
and character opponent options and understanding that Honda's normals actually don't even project the hurt box until pretty deep into them or retract his hurt box uh, until this kind of hands pressure really became more effective. So as a result, when I'm playing Honda, I very regularly get into these situations in which people know what my options are and they begin to retract. It happens all the time that I play against people in a set and in game number one, in hand situations, they're pressing buttons, they're doing stuff, and sometimes that hits me. In fact, oftentimes it hits me. But as we begin to play a longer set, they get a better understanding of the fact that I can whiff punish things, that I'm setting up spacing traps constantly, and they begin to defend a little more, pull in a little more. I'll talk later about how opponents can actually deal with this better, but as a Honda player, if you recognize that they're doing that, that gives you full license to be a big jerk face. I mean, I haven't hit her at all. I didn't, I didn't hit her at all. And that was 20% of her life in chip very quickly. Not to mention, she just got pushed into the corner very quickly. And that happens all the time. So if you recognize that your opponent is being flustered, if they, if they are sort of retreating into a shell as a way to deal with hands, that means you get to do cool stuff. That means, again, you get to force them into the corner, you get to get more chip damage. If you don't have full bar yet, you can actually build a lot of meter this way. And as a result, I sometimes get five, my maximum is six EX butt slams in a single round because I'm building meter constantly. And <laughs> sometimes people let me get away with that. When this happens a little bit more often, you can begin to get other mix-ups involved here. So here's a here's a, an example. So let's do stand fierce into jab hands. Into stand jab is a trade. But if you do it instead into EX command grab, that will win in that situation. And that means that you get to start this mix-up from jab hands. The other strengths of hands, this is sometimes too far away, that's medium hands. But in any case, medium hands is only plus one and doesn't guarantee that it's going to work, right? Jab hands does. Uh, and so the, the throw game out of this is not super fantastic. Instead, what I often rely on is the fact that as Honda moves forward, again, watch him uh, kind of lurches. Uh. Compare that with this. Compare that with walking forward. Which one's which, right? Until you see the hands actually come out on frame 17, which one's which? It's hard, right? And that's true. Walking forward and doing the beginning of medium or fierce hands actually looks pretty similar. And especially in the sort of frustrated heat of the moment, very commonly people will let you walk in because they think that it's beginning of hands pressure. And so as long as you're not like canceling into hands, right? If you do this, it's like very clearly it's gonna be hands. You can't do this and then walk forward in the same way. Uh, but if you're not in that kind of situation, then say that you've just done this, right? Maybe I do another hands here, or maybe I do this. Maybe I walk in for a grab. So using the fact that these options look kind of similar can actually help build your throw game as well. So on hit, if you, say you land fierce hands. Maybe you don't have meter, maybe you don't have much for conversions. Maybe you just wanna do, like this, you're now plus two and you're in throw range right away. You don't have to walk forward at all. Instead, you could do EX grab, which is faster, of course. So fierce hands on hit sets up a frame trap. And this could, you can take advantage of this, not just with grab, of course, but you know, with some kind of hit confirm or whatever it is, or just trying jab into jab hands, whatever it may be, as a way to maintain pressure. Stand straight. Something like that, right. So use opponent's frustrations against them to get more throw attempts, to get more chip damage, to build more meter, to push them into the corner more. These are ways to take advantage of this sort of thing. And sometimes I realize while I'm playing against even strong players, even some really good players who I've happened to play against online, sometimes I'll do fierce hands. And that's minus two, and so I'm supposed to have to block. But, Sometimes they're flustered 
and they don't quite realize which strength of hands is which in the moment. And so it's a call out, and it shouldn't work very often, but every once in a while, including against sometimes some good players, you can notice that you'll get, if, if you see that people block fierce hands and don't do anything, they may think that it's plus because maybe they've just misidentified which strength of hands it is. Let's talk about how opponents beat this stuff. What are the solutions for the opponents? Well, there's a few that are the main ones. So one is that opponents might pick the right buttons to interrupt hands pressure because they exist. Again, when you're doing this kind of stuff, you are whiff punishing buttons. So if their buttons come out later, or if they just press their buttons later, they will actually counter hit the beginning of your buttons. And so what happens sometimes against people who I either know really well and know all the options or who I'm playing against for the first time and they don't yet actually know the options, they haven't retreated into their shell yet, sometimes they'll try like big stuff like a stand fierce or, or whatever their crush counters. Maybe they'll try a sweep like this. And when I try to get away with something, they'll come in with a big crush counter because they have plenty of time to do that. Plenty of time. This is not about lack of time. This is about where buttons connect on screen. This is about actually delaying in some cases when you try an option. So if you're an opponent defending against this stuff, realize that there are giant big frame gaps. If I'm trying to get away with jab hands into even medium hands, that's a 15 frame gap. A lot of time, a lot of time. So keep that in mind. Now, obviously, if I think you're gonna do that, I got ways to beat it, right? So if you're Honda, the way to deal with somebody bringing out a slower button or actually just doing their button later is to do your faster button. You got faster stuff, you don't have super fast stuff, but stand short is four frames and jab is five frames and jab is cancelable. So, oh, let's do, you know, that can very quickly turn in your favor. Another very common tool uh, is to jump. All right, so again, let's say that I'm harassing in this way. Oh, you can see she definitely could have landed with Jump Brownhouse. She's got a great button that hits pretty far down below her. And so if she called out that I was gonna do some other button after that, some other hands pressure, she can get a full jump in combo. A lot of damage, right? She can do that. She can do a jump forward over me and get a cross up. That's very common. In fact, some characters can just empty jump over and punish you if you're trying something like Fierce Hands, right? Because again, this is, this is quite a long time on startup and it lasts a long time. So if you are the opponent here, keep in mind that you can jump as well as a solution. Uh, in fact, some characters, I mentioned V-reversals before, but some characters whose V-reversals aren't hits, roll behind you, that sort of thing, Ed, Fang, that kind of stuff. If you do Fierce Hands and they V-reversal roll behind you, they can actually punish you before you can block. Uh, so these are some character specific solutions to that as well. The way to view this as a Honda player is that you're throwing fireballs. So so think about this kind of pressure, or maybe just you're doing Fei Long Rekkas in Street Fighter 4 or in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Think about Rekkas and, and fireballs and how when you're at a certain range, maybe it's a little closer in for hands, but maybe let's talk about fireballs. You're throwing a fireball here. Fireball, 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 fireball. Then the opponent's like, aha, a fireball's coming. I'm going to do a jump in combo. If they hit you, they do, you know, 200 to 600 damage, depending on resources and character and positioning and all that sort of stuff. But minimum, like you're taking some significant damage, maybe into Oki, it's gonna be bad news. So, as the fireball thrower in that situation, you try to leave gaps that you are goading the opponent into jumping during. So maybe I'm harassing this sort of stuff. Oh, get it, quit it, you know? And then eventually I think they're gonna jump and I hold my charge. I'm usually holding charge the whole time. And I'm looking for them to jump, and I get, up. Oh, this guy. You are looking for anti-airs as a way to continue this grounded pressure, just in the same way that a Fei Long player would look for somebody jumping out of Rekkas, just in the same way that a Ryu player would look for somebody to jump out of Fireball. Same kind of idea. And you have, you got good options for this. Right here's another option if you think that the opponent's gonna do that. In fact, that, that is actually great mid-screen. Oh, sometimes it can be too good for itself. Let's try to do this. Right, so even if she had jumped backwards there, that would have chased her down. So Honda has this really big effective range of control versus jumps. Think about the 
Holy, you see how there's two big squares between Sakura and me on the ground right now. That is basically the range of EX Butt Slam. So if she had been up in the sky, I would have knocked her down from that far away. It's a huge column of airspace that he controls with EX Butt Slam. Now, some characters can punish EX Butt Slam. There are solutions to it that many characters have. In those, you have to be a little bit more read heavy to bring in EX Butt Slam to try to maintain pressure. But there are certainly some matchups where opponents can't do much about it. And you can do this. Worst case scenario, you're plus five on block, right? That's what you are after EX Butt Slam. You're plus five. Uh, which is pretty strong. Another way, of course, to deal with people jumping is just to do normals. Right? Stand Pierce is a pretty good anti-air. If you're a little bit further away, maybe you do Stand Roundhouse. So you have some an some anti-airs from a few different spots as Honda that you can deal with uh, pretty well. And out of those jumps, you know, for example, you can put them down into hands, or you can do Right versus anti-air stand fierce into immediate hands or whatever. There's any number of mix-ups you can you can do anti-air into, you know that kind of thing. A lot of different mix-ups that you can do after an anti-air as Honda. So you are again trying to maintain pressure in part by leaving these little holes that you hope the opponents will take as a way to maintain pressure, knock them down from their jumps, whatever it may be. Something you really got to pay attention to to maintain control here. But again, still is a really important option for the defender in these situations. You can't let Honda think you're never going to jump. If you never jump, then Honda will deal too much chip damage, and that's going to be a big bummer for you. So you have to do that sometimes at least. Another really common solution to this is to do a backdash. Let's say that I've just done like a kind of long pressure series, and we ended up at about this range. That's, that's hard for me to chase at that point. Even that. Well, some characters can backdash that properly. I guess maybe Sakura cannot, but many characters can just backdash eventually, right? Now, maybe before that, you've blocked a lot of hands until, you know, eventually Honda gets out of pressure. But that is a really common solution and an important one to just reset the situation, just get backwards. Uh, and from that backward spot, again, once Honda doesn't have something he's immediately buffering hands into, if you reset the situation, then he's at a range where he's not immediately going to be able to start hands pressure again. He's got to find some buffer, some buffer, a jump, a cancel, whatever it may be for him to get things going again. But once you've reset, like into this spot right here, you can play a little bit more of the game that you want to play. So keep that in mind. If you're Honda, it's the same kind of solutions as with somebody jumping. You know, EX Butt Slam as a chase. Again, that is uh, punishable by some characters, so keep that in mind. That's a matchup thing. You can also chase with Fierce Headbutt. Everybody can punish that. In some cases, you can chase with Jab Headbutt. Again, that's going to be character specific, depending on how fast their dashes are. That's going to be spacing specific, depending on how close you started it. All that sort of stuff of knowing exactly where you are and what your opponent's options are really comes into play when it comes to chasing back dashes. But you can do it. Again, though, this is just a set of the mix-ups. Say that your opponent does not do a backdash, and uh-oh, you've done Fierce Headbutt right in their face. Or even worse, EX Headbutt right in their face. Whatever they want to do to you is what they're going to do to you. You know, whatever max damage thing they have. EX Headbutt's minus 26. Opponents can dash in and do a Fierce or a Roundhouse. You have, as the opponent, a lot of time to punish. So these are big reads. And this can be a big read depending on the matchup. Some matchups, that's a tough one. Right, I mean, this is this is classic grappler stuff. So if you want to chase, there you go. You certainly have a forward dash. The opponent can do whatever because <laughs> you're not presenting an active hitbox. At least if you want to chase with this, that's jab headbutt. Or if you want to chase with this, these are hitboxes that will hit people who are trying to hit you. Although they can be unsafe on block, right? So that just is a that's a matchup thing. It's a spacing thing. This is always going to be unsafe, but you can certainly get it right. And if you dash forward, dash forward into grab, dash forward into you know stand short, which is your fastest, or crouching short into jab hands as a way to just instantly be plus two, instantly get the hands mix-ups going. But again, back dash important as well. Uh, another common thing that I see at high level is people just blocking it out. They just wait. They play defensively. Eventually, this Honda player is going to get tired of doing this stuff. And eventually, you know, I, I sort of am at a spot of trying to maintain hands 
where, yeah, I've kind of run out of stuff. If, I, if I'm if i at this spot, I just did Fierce Hands to try to maintain pressure. Again, minus two. If I want to do something else again, I got to bring in, at best, a nine frame gap, which is seven frame jab hands. Worse than that, what if I were to do minus two at this range into strong hands? Wow, right? Now again, I can maybe have a spacing trap there and punish the opponent, but at this far range, it's going to be even harder to chase them if they want to do a back dash. It's going to be even harder to chase them if they want to do a jump back. You know, so some strong players will just wait it out. Some players will just give up V-Meter. Some people will play against Honda just thinking, I'm not going to have V-Trigger in this matchup. I'm just going to spend all my V-Meter on V-Reversaling every hands that he ever does. And that works. That can work. As the Honda player, that means that you begin pressuring with more normals, of course, right? Right, there's other stuff that you can do, is it doesn't need to be hands. But that's certainly a strategy that can work. It's worked against me. I've seen it work against stronger Honda players than me. So just sort of waiting it out defensively is something that you can do. Uh, you know, it's consider that it's similar to how when you play against a Dalson player, or when you play against some dedicated zoner or some really good up-close grappler, whatever it may be, whatever archetype you find is frustrating to deal with, you may get frustrated sometimes. Oh, Honda's keeping me out. I'm sorry, Honda. Uh, Dalson's keeping me out. Oh no, I'm frustrated. I begin to jump, I begin to do weird dashes, I, you know, begin to get hit. Whatever it is, I'm not thinking well because I'm frustrated. But, you can also view the Dalson matchup as just, look, he's going to put himself into a bad spot eventually. And I don't lose too much by just blocking some hands, or some, some uh, normals. What, some gray life? You know, it's not such a big deal. If I hit him, it's going to be for a lot more damage than that. So there's different ways to view these matchups that uh, don't you don't need to be frustrated. So if, if this is happening to you, oh my god, it's all these hands. Oh, I've taken a lot of chip damage. Oh no, uh, what do I do? I, uh, I don't know. Think about this. If you do one jump in combo versus a Honda, if you were right one of those times, you deal more damage than he just dealt. And so you have to view it as that sort of numbers game of, you don't need to be frustrated, you have options. And Honda takes risks each time he does a strength of hands. You know, again, if, if I think that the opponent's just gonna play defensively in that way, I'm more grab focused, I'm more normals focused. He's got a lot of just normals that are plus on block. It's okay, you don't need to be doing stuff. He's got almost everything he does is safe as far as normals go. You're not really taking risks in that way. There's ways that Honda can overcome a defensive player that aren't just with hands. So keep that in mind as well. And then lastly, you know, the opponent could do something like that. Oh no, did I not have bar? I don't have bar. Okay, well that's fine I guess. Looking for DP, but that's totally fine. Uh, let's. See. Okay, here I am. Uh, mashing, 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 mashing. Oh no! This is whatever. In Street Fighter V, if somebody is willing to do something that puts them at such risk, I think that typically I'll take that. You know, of course, if it's a round ender or game ender or match ender, that's a different question. But if we're just playing a match and like I'm. Whatever, I'm harassing with hands, and then like you do some crazy crap, I don't know, whatever, however you punish that. Um, you know, if you want to take that risk, I mean, that's, that's okay. Go for it. Sometimes you'll be right, and sometimes you'll lose half your life against an extremely damaging character. So I've been talking a lot about how to use hands in neutral, get by footsies. Uh, uh, use it as a way to deal chip damage, use it as a way to build spacing trap mix-ups, use it for combos, uh, lots of different stuff that you can do with hands. It's very useful, like, very versatile stuff. What The last thing I want to talk about here is actually defensive uses of hands, because there are just a couple. One is that it's cancelable from crouching short, although that's pretty tough to do. Honestly, it is, it is pretty tough, and if you screw it up a lot, I still do. There you go. But say that the opponent is here, I'm getting up, Sakura is going to try to shimmy me. Well, there it is. There's a solution, right? I have a 4 frame low, 
into on block plus two on hit plus three either way i'm good that's great it's a risk of course just like waking up with any button is going to be a risk but honda doesn't it doesn't need to be you don't need to conceive of him as having no defensive options he doesn't have no defensive options everybody in this game has defensive options he just doesn't have something invincible or immediately armored but versus very common things like shimmies he does have this into hands if you have v skill 2 you know, you're doing Crouching Medium Kick instead from even further range. Crouching Short's pretty short range, but Crouching Medium Kick's like a normal Crouching Medium Kick range. It's like pretty pretty standard. And you can do that. You can also just do Wake Up Hands. Wake Up Hands. How does that work? Well, many characters in this game like to steal turns. That's what I'm telling you to do with Honda. You are stealing turns constantly with this guy. Constantly, constantly stealing turns with spacing traps. What if the opponent wants to do that sometimes? Well, hands is actually a pretty good way to to stop that stuff because it has such a long active hitbox. So say that you're against some character who throws you mid-screen and doesn't get a free dash, but wants to dash in. Say this is Karen, who throws you mid-screen and then wants to do a command dash to get close. That's not real, but sometimes she gets away with it because you're not expecting it. If you are expecting it, wake up with some of these. And if you have one of these ready to go, you know, you're... Again, this whole series of big, big damage that you can build out of that. And if you get blocked, not a big deal. You're plus on block. So some some other characters have these kinds of gambits that they can play, but most are not as active as long as, as jab hands is. And most aren't plus on block as jab hands is. And most aren't good V-trigger activation points like jab hands is. So again, defensively, Honda doesn't have anything that's immediately invincible, other than Super. He doesn't have anything that's immediately armored. Frame 3 or frame 4 for EX headbutt or for one of the V-Trigger headbutt or command grabs. Doesn't have a 3-frame button. His 4-frame button, two of them, are both pretty dinky. Not much range on these things. But you have other tools that you can use, and some of them include canceling into hands or just doing raw hands. For me, the hands mix-ups are some of the most interesting pressure series in Street Fighter V. A lot of pressure in this game is is n sort of boiled down to just raw frame data. This is plus four, which means that I get to do a free stand jab because there's only a one frame gap. You can't hit a button in between, and that's a frame trap. And at some point, when you play it against strong players, they want to take more of a turn, so they don't always want to do medium kick into stand jab because that doesn't give you much. Sometimes they'll do medium kick into walk for medium kick, right? So it becomes, it opens up, and the game is at a place where it's really open and interesting, I feel, in general. But the traps, the mix-ups basically boil down to frame data for many characters. But for Honda, they really don't. They really don't. It's, the frame traps themselves exist. They're mostly with normals, not with hands, but they do exist. But it's this, it's this other game. It is about spacing traps. And that's just, it's not unique, he's not the only character who has that kind of game. You may also see birdie players doing that, you may see dictator players doing that. Many characters have that kind of idea, once they push themselves out to a certain spot, cami, right? Strong, strong. Fierce! This Fierce is gonna whiff, but if you try to press a button there, she's gonna get there first, or she's gonna whiff punish you, and she's going to be able to cancel. So it's not a Honda unique thing, but he's doing it so often. It's such a fundamental part of the hands mix-ups that I really enjoy it. I think it's super fun and and unique in how often he goes to the well on it and in how many permutations there are of it because they hands pressure is different in almost every matchup. This character is one where it's quite different because her stand short so far. Just such a good stand light kick that she can almost always punish this jab head button, so that's less of an option than you even normally want to do. So you're more hands focused, but because she has that far fast tool, she can, if timed correctly, if timed a little bit later, she can interrupt a lot of stuff. So this is a matchup where it's got to be different, and I like that. I'm not sure this is like a winning matchup per se, but I like that it's different each time. You're not, it's not just a, a raw, well, I'm plus four, so I got to do a button that is you know, four frames or five frames, whatever, right? It's not just about that. It's about knowing what the opponent's options are, and that's very cool to me.
It's also pretty unique to play for Chip in this game. Most characters don't play for Chip. So I'm really enjoying Honda. I continue to really enjoy Honda. And I'm looking forward to him moving forward. I just I feel like there's a lot of fun, interesting stuff ahead for the character. I'm still finding stuff new about how things work. I think I'll be doing that for quite a while. So that's a little rundown about Honda's 100 hands in Street Fighter V. How to use them, why to use them, where to use them, many of the most important mix-ups related to them, how to beat them if you're the opponent, and then also how to beat those attempts to beat your 100 hands if you are Honda himself. Cool? Cool.